Um, I really am excited to see like how fans in the arena react to like when we get close down the stretch in these winter go home knockout round games. Like I feel like it's really like this is going to be as close to playoff basketball without it being the first round of the playoffs um, that the NBA is going to get. And then I'm really, really interested to see what that championship game is like that 83rd game that doesn't really count for the schedule. But then you have obviously that half a million dollar incentive for everybody on the roster. Like, Mm-hmm. What is that going to feel like from an encore perspective? And then obviously it being in Vegas, like what type of fan engagement are they going to get there? I think there's a lot, a lot for the league that is good off of this initial run. And there's still like so much, I think that they could tap into to kind of grow it and develop it more. Um, I've seen people toss around trying to add different incentives, like maybe bumping lottery odds or, or things like that to the winner, just to make it a little bit more meaningful. I don't know if, Tinkering with that is necessarily the right route, but there definitely are different ways. I think that Adam Silver and the league will will grow it in the years to come. But between this and the plan, like these new additions are like just great for the game and just adds more meaningful competitive basketball, uh, which is, I mean, like for a diehard fan is great, but it's really good at engaging the casual fan more frequently throughout the season, which I know is their their goal um, of putting the end season tournament in the first place. And, and yeah. you know people are going to use that in legacy debates too. Let's say, oh yeah, let's say yeah. the Lakers go and they win this first one. You already know, hey, and LeBron won the inaugural uh, <laughs> tournament too. Don't forget about that. So yeah, no, of course, it, it, it is dependent on who wins it too. Like if the Pacers are, are going to be one of those teams that wins, it'd be like ah, it's the Pacers regular season. It is what it is. Right. They won't think too much about it. But if the Celtics go and win it, Milwaukee. Uh, the Lakers, I'll even throw the Kings in there because they earned our respect like that. It's one of those that are the Knicks. Let, I, let me not disrespect New York either. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see which team wins because I feel like that'll drive narratives also. Definitely, definitely. Um, one of the last things I'll say about it, the only thing I do wish, and I don't want to turn this into like they have to add more teams, but it was tough because, like, for a team like the Magic, who had already played all of their games, they were sitting at three and one already. I feel like it's hard because then the Celtics get to go into the last, they get to go into their game on Tuesday night, know what point differential they have yep. to get to, and like it's unfortunate they got the the Bulls to wrap up their their in season mm-hmm. tournament run, but they got to just bully up on a team that needs to push the like the reset button three years ago. Like, that, yeah. <laughs> um. So. I, I don't know if they need to add more teams. And it's also harsh because it's like head to head, the Magic beat the Celtics in their East in season tournament True. matchup. So it's like, I know you don't want to necessarily rely at all on just head to head. It's not really how group play works, but and there has to be another happy medium between, I think, just the point differential. Um, because it's it is tough for teams like there's probably, I think, like three or four different three and one teams that did not end up making this the final cut. I know the Nets were one of them. Magic was another one. I know I'm missing another one off the top of my head. Um, but they all just, just ended up losing out on point differential. So um, I'm interested to see if they tweet that moving forward because that also I know was like hectic trying to keep up like on Twitter, figuring out what teams need to do or how much they need to win by like in real time. The TNT broadcast was trying to do a good job of like keeping us like tapped in around the league, but it's a little hectic and hard to try to keep up with. Um, but like I said, overall, it wasn't going to be perfect, but I don't—I really don't think you could have asked for more from this first iteration of the, the in-season tournament. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. The the Cavaliers were three and one; they missed out. Uh, mm-hmm. The Magic and the Nets both three and one; they both missed out. Minnesota was three and one; they missed yep. out. A lot of good teams, and the Nets sneakily three and one too in the play in the in-season tournament too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, some good teams that just missed out. Maybe you're right. You do add some more teams into the end season knockout, make it a little bit prolong it right up until that that Christmas break. And then you have Christmas Day basketball. That would be more of an exciting thing regardless because it is Christmas Day and everyone's tuned into basketball then. And that's – you have, what, th- two, three weeks in that period? So if you want to add game or add teams, I think that the time period is long enough that you can get away with it. All right. And, hey, look. If Adam Silver steals this, y'all know y'all heard it here first. Mm-hmm. Talk. Like it wouldn't, Act. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be too crazy if, right, we extend out that in-season tournament to a point where that championship game is like in that prime time Christmas Day slot. 
Who Good wouldn't want right half? There. Who That's wouldn't want half? A, right who wouldn't want half a meal on Christmas Day? I would. That is, right. <laughs> That's, right there. That's it right there oh, for sure. I like that. So look, look. If if Adam Silver steals an A, we know he listens to the pod. So that's it. <laughs> but, but B, I'll know that y'all y'all heard it here first. But I like that. I think that that would be good. Um, and even if it like again, if it lives in that, it's not a regular season game. That's enough of an incentive. On top of the fact that it's going to be a Christmas Day matchup, like you know, that's such a historic type of feel in the NBA. Like guys are going to get up for that regardless. Definitely. Um, 